Serving Eastern Pennsylvania and Western New Jersey, this is WFMC-TV. Today on 69 News at Sunrise, new details on the train derailment in Lower Saucon Township. Plus, the hearings held on Capitol Hill about National Transportation Safety Board investigations. Violence continues in Philadelphia. The latest incident, eight teenagers shot at a SEPTA bus stop. Your life, your world, your news. This is 69 News, live at Sunrise. Good morning, everyone. I'm Karen Millett. And I'm Eve Russo. Good morning, everybody. We'll have those stories and more in a moment. Yeah, first, though, let's check on the forecast and a little drizzly out there. Good morning, Matt. Right, Again. Good morning, ladies. <laughs> yeah, grab the umbrella first part of the day. Okay. We'll see some improvement and then that break tomorrow. As we've talked about all week, Friday is the best day weather-wise before more rain arrives for the upcoming weekend. We'll spell it out out for you here over the next a few minutes here and all morning long. 52 in the Lehigh Valley, 51 at Sussex. We're basically in the 50s this morning, except in the northern sections, Mount Pocono and Scranton at 45. Hazleton's the cool spot, 42. Pottsville at 44. If you're a Harrisburg commuter, it is 40, uh, 50, and then uh, eastbound to Newark at 52 degrees. But a lot of 40s out there for the most part. Here's the setup. Low pressure will continue to make its way off toward the north and the east. And again, it will bring with it that rainfall. So the rain will be confined here to the morning before we do start to see some improvement. This is what it's looked like the past 24 hours. You can see just one last batch here that will move through. I would give it until 7, 8, maybe 9, uh, uh, nine o'clock latest uh, from southwest to northeast uh, is when the rain will end. Uh, and as far as uh, conditions go, as far as temperatures go, uh, we will end up in the 50s this afternoon. There will be a lot of cloud cover. We could, again, kind of like the other day where we tried to break the clouds before the sunset. We'll try to do that again later on this afternoon. All right, your seven-day forecast coming up in just a few more minutes. Right now, let's say good morning to Steve Mittman. Hey, Matt. Good morning. It's 5.02. Traffic-wise, travel-wise, no problems. So far, so good on 22. I-78 as well. 378, 309. No issues. Lehigh County, 309. Bucks County, not a problem. If you're traveling on the Turnpike, you're good. North-south and northeast extension. And the main line Turnpike, too. Getting on or off. Morgantown, Downingtown, not an issue. This report brought to you by your local Volkswagen dealers. Hurry in today. Eve? Your life, your world, your news. This is 69 News at 9. Good morning, I'm Karen Millett. And I'm Eve Russo. We're learning new details from the federal investigation into last weekend's train crash and derailment in Lower Saucon Township. Township officials received an update from the National Transportation Safety Board during a meeting last night. Rick Holmes has more. A standing ovation for first responders at the Lower Saucon Municipal Building, including Fire Chief Ty Johnson. Coming up on 69 News at Noon, investigators release new details about what went wrong before part of a train's locomotives tumbled into the Lehigh River. Authorities in Philadelphia are vowing to add more protection to the SEPTA system as they search for the gunman behind a mass shooting. An Allentown official is leveling new allegations against the city's leaders. Details next. And West Reading hopes to turn a gas station and service center into a resource for the borough. Good afternoon. I'm Karen Millette. 69 News at Noon starts now. Your life, your world, your news. This is 69 News, live at noon. First at noon, new details about the Norfolk Southern train derailment in Northampton County. The NTSB's lead investigator on the case updated the Lower Saucon Township Council last night. He said an eastbound freight train was stopped at a signal when it was rear-ended by another train Saturday morning. He says three cars carrying containers derailed and fell onto the adjacent tracks. 
Next on 69 News at 4, the State of the Union is just a few hours away. From the war in Gaza to the upcoming election, we will look ahead at President Biden's much-anticipated address. Then, after yet another mass shooting at a SEPTA bus stop, we'll hear from an expert on how to keep yourself safe. A cross-country flight to save a life. We will have a story of a local toddler traveling coast-to-coast -coast for a life-saving operation. Then, after back-to-back -back rainy days, the sun has finally come out just a little bit. But how long will it stick around? We'll have your full forecast in just a little bit. 69 News at 4 starts right now. Your life, your world, your news. This is 69 <laughs> News Live at 4. Good afternoon. I'm Jim Vaughn. And I'm Blake McHugh. First at four, we're just a few hours away from what's expected to be one of President Biden's most important political speeches. Yep, he is set to deliver his State of the Union address. This as he fights for a second term amid a lot of turmoil, both at home and overseas. Let's bring our Justin back over in with more on what the president is expected to say tonight, Justin. Yeah, Jim and Blakely, now that it's pretty much confirmed that the next presidential election will be a rematch against former President Donald Trump, this speech will be a lot about drawing contrasts. And there will also be a lot of talk on hot button issues. On 69 News at 5, big speech tonight. We'll show it. President Biden at 9 on the state of our union. What does he have to do? We'll talk about it next. Police now have the car, but they're still trying to find the shooters. We'll get the latest on a mass shooting at a SEPTA bus stop. Eight teenage students were hit. And whether it's Dr. Seuss or Mother Goose, Frog and Toad or Goodnight Moon, it's good for the kids to be in the books. Coming up, Linda Weed on Getting Kids to Read. The News at 5 starts now. Your life, your world, your news. This is 69 News Live at 5. Good evening, I'm Rob Vaughn. I'm Wendy Davis. First at five, a high stakes State of the Union for President Biden. Happens tonight, we'll carry it live for you. Expect a chorus of cheers and a barrage of boos on Capitol Hill as the president points to his accomplishments and makes his case for a second term. Justin Backover is here with a preview of the big speech. Justin. Yeah, Wendy and Rob with Nikki Haley dropping out of the primary race yesterday. The general election matchup is pretty much set between Biden and Trump. This speech will be focused on a lot on drawing contrast between the two men and experts I spoke with think the president will lean into a lot of hot button issues. Good evening, I'm Rob Vaughn. I'm Wendy Davis. The Burks edition at 530 starts now. Your life, your world, your news. This is 69 News Burks edition live at 530. President Biden's getting ready to deliver the State of the Union address. The White House says Biden will focus on the economy in his speech tonight. That'll include his plan to increase the corporate tax rate and his efforts to lower drug costs and crack down on junk fees. The White House says the president will also announce a plan to establish a port on Gaza's coast to increase the flow of humanitarian aid to that area. Biden will speak before a joint session of Congress at 9 o'clock. Alabama Senator Katie Britt will give the GOP response. We'll air it for you tonight. A Berks County teacher will be in the audience for that speech. He's been invited by Congresswoman Madeline Dean. 69 News reporter Sierra Janelle joins us live in the Burks studio with the details. Sierra. Robin, Wendy, good evening. That's right. Benjamin Hoffman says that that invite came as a pleasant surprise. He tells me that his excitement for tonight really stems from the opportunity to represent a small town community like Kutztown at such a historical event. Good evening, I'm Rob Vaughn. I'm Wendy Davis. Do riders feel safe on public transit? 69 News at 6 starts now. Your life, your world, your news. This is 69 News Live at 6. The search is on tonight for three shooters and a driver after the mass shooting at a SEPTA bus stop in Philadelphia yesterday afternoon. Police say the shooting appears to be a targeted shooting. Police found the getaway car abandoned in the only section of north central Philadelphia last night. The three shooters fired more than 30 times, hitting eight high school students between the ages of 15 and 17. A 16-year-old boy believed to be the target was shot nine times. He is in critical condition in the hospital. The other seven victims, six boys in a girl are in stable condition. Police want to know if the shooting is connected to another shooting at a SEPTA bus stop on Monday. Your life, your world, your news. This is 69 News Live at 8. 
Happening tonight, President Joe Biden will deliver his State of the Union address. It's set to happen in about an hour now, and you can see it right here on WFMZ TV. It's one of the biggest pieces of political theater every year. But you know, it's no joke for the Commander in Chief. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Dane Murray. Biden will use the address to promote his vision for a second term while sharpening the contrast with his all but certain November rival, former President Donald Trump. Our Justin Backover gives us a preview. Your life, your world, your news. This is 69 News, <clears throat> live at 10. Tonight, caught on camera, a mass shooting at a SEPTA bus stop. Masked men fire a barrage of bullets hitting eight teenagers at a bus stop on the Philly city line with Montgomery County. At this hour, the shooters are not in custody. Good evening, I'm Rob Vaughn. I'm Wendy Davis. We'll have the latest on that mass shooting in Philadelphia in just a moment. But first tonight, new details from federal investigators on last weekend's train crash and derailment in Lower Saucon Township. Including how the second crash happened just one minute after the first one. Tonight, first responders recalls what happened and what the fire chief said to the conductors of one of the locomotives that went into the Lehigh River. 69 News reporter Rick Holmes is in Lower Saucon Township tonight with those new details from the investigation. Rick. Well, the NTSB met with the city council tonight. They have taken all the evidence from the scene. They have reviewed records, and the NTSB investigation is looking to look into the safety aspect of this and will not determine guilt or who is at fault. Good evening once again. I'm Wendy Davis. And I'm Rob Vaughn. The Berks edition at 1030 starts right now. Your life, your world, your news. This is 69 News Burks Edition, live at 1030. A developing story tonight out of Northeast Philadelphia. Police are looking for the people who shot eight teenagers at a SEPTA bus stop this afternoon. Late tonight, we received surveillance footage from the Philadelphia police. Dramatic video that shows the moment that three suspects hop out of a car and then open fire on the students who are waiting for a SEPTA bus. It happened just before 3 p.m. in the city's Burholm neighborhood on the Philly city line with Montgomery County near Cheltenham. Police say more than 30 shots were fired and all eight students at the bus stop were hospitalized, one in critical condition after suffering nine gunshot wounds. It was the fourth shooting in less than a week involving a SEPTA bus. Now to our other top story at 1030, a man accused of shooting and killing a former NFL player in Berks County is now behind bars. Antonio Denard was shot outside of Legends Bar and Restaurant in Muhlenberg Township back in October of 2022. Now his family is speaking out about the arrest. 69 News reporter Sierra Janelle joins us live outside the Berks County Services Center in Reading with more. Sierra. Robin Wendy, 26-year-old Jose Pizarro was arrested in an apartment building in Brooklyn, New York by the U.S. Marshals and the New York Police Department. Now families speaking out saying that they believe this arrest has caused a moment of closure. Enseguida en su edición en español, la policía anuncia más arrestos en relación con una pelea de gallos. Tenemos los últimos detalles. Además, entra en efecto un programa de radares de tráfico en zonas de construcción en todo el estado de Pensilvania. En sus deportes locales, una joven del Valle Lija y nos habla sobre su participación en el torneo estatal de lucha libre y su enfoque para salir victoriosa. Comenzamos con sus noticias. Su vida, su mundo. Sus noticias. Este es 69 News, edición en español. Saludos, les informa Perla López Baray. Iniciamos con una noticia en desarrollo en Filadelfia. Al menos ocho personas recibieron disparos esta tarde en una parada de autobús de Septa, según la policía. El tiroteo masivo ocurrió cerca de dos escuelas en las avenidas Rising Sun en Cutterman, en el noreste de la ciudad. Según el Canal 6, nuestra estación afiliada, cuatro de los heridos son menores de edad y recibieron heridas en la pierna y uno en el pecho. Por el momento no se ha revelado la gravedad de sus heridas ni la causa de este tiroteo.